okay all right so we left off um right here where it says okay there must be strict obedience you have to obey uh the government has to make sure that you obey okay so it says um there must be punishment to assure respect for government and those who govern. Now, the respect that people have for government nowadays is not very much because it's really kind of hard to respect people in a leadership position. And I'm talking about in your home, on your job, uh, the government, the, the church, wherever. It's hard to respect people in a leadership position when they don't respect you. When they're lying to you and they're not doing what they're supposed to do. You know, just like I look at people, they come around voting time, they come around to these churches. These people never come to church any other time. They only come to people's churches, um, especially in the black churches. They come to these churches on when they want votes. But when you need something, you, I, get, I guarantee you, you would not be able to find any of those people. You wouldn't, they just ain't going to happen. And I question the fact that the, the, the leadership is allowing these people ungodly. They are ungodly people. They are throwing up signs and symbols that say that they belong to these secret societies and they're letting these people come into their church and to their flock and, and telling them to vote for this person when they've done nothing. When the last time I was over on the east side, I haven't seen anything change. It still looks run down and beat down and the streets are tore up, okay? It would be a great incentive to rebels if they knew there was no punishment for rebellion. No government could long endure where there was leniency or respect of persons with those who plot and practice to overthrow the good government. Yeah, good government. But when the government is wicked, what do you think is going to happen? What did you think was going to happen? If laws and penalties are revealed to subjects of the government and they ignore, reject, and willfully disobey them, if the government is loose and the rulers too weak to punish rebellion, or if the rulers are too lenient, merciful, and forbearing to execute the laws and mete out judgment to sustain good government, rebellion, re rebels will take over. Well, what do you think what's happening right now? That's what's happening right now because government is too leniency. They're putting good people in jail, people who are innocent in jail, and they're letting the people out. You know why? Because they can't discern nothing. Because they, 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 they're too lenient. And then the people that they pour more on, they don't deserve it. It's overkill for the innocent. And even if they did do it, some of it is still overkill. You're going to put somebody in jail for a pack, stealing a pack of gum for almost the rest of their life? What's the matter with you? Now, so when man doesn't fails to do, guess who steps in and starts doing it? God is not such a ruler, nor does he carry on a weak government. He uphold, he upholds law and order and meets out punishment and rewards as required, thus qualifying himself as being capable of his sovereignty and moral responsibility. Whether the subjects are holy, angels, or men, Yahweh must demand obedience to all his laws, and he is under obligation to punish as his law prescribes, or bless as he has promised, whenever disobedience or obedience is rendered. For God to be lenient in just one case and fail to execute punishment upon the sinner would break down respect for him in the hearts of all others who are assured of justice should they sin. They can, there can be no respect of persons with him. And you can find that in Romans 2 and 11 and James 2, 9 through 10. You see, if God allowed me to get away see i've sinned too i've done wrong too there are sometimes i've done stuff wrong and he punished me you know or corrected me you know thank god his wrath didn't fall on me 
but I, 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 I did get punished. I did get corrected, you know. And uh, so he, but he only did that to bring it to my attention that I was going the wrong way and, and that I needed to stop because I, I was going to get in a situation, really, really get in a situation where I was going to really get hurt, you see. So when God punishes us or he's correcting us, it's not because he don't love us. It's because he does love us. People who don't bring correction to you, and I'm not talking about people who are judging you critically. I'm talking about when they bring correction to you in love. I mean, sometimes you got to speak correction to people in love, but you got to be firm. That don't mean you don't love them. Wicked people don't love God's people. They don't love us. That's what you need to get through your minds today. They don't love you. They are using you to get rich, and they are already rich. I think for some of them, it's not even a matter of money anymore. It's just a matter of the fact that they just reprobate most of them, and the and uh, other ones is just they they get off on it. They just have fun deceiving and masquerading as people of God. And uh, it says even in Psalms twelve and eight, it says even though the wicked strut about. And evil is praised throughout the land. Well, the only reason the only reason evil is uh, people are straight about and doing evil and stuff. Uh, this man, these two men, hacked a guy in broad daylight with a meat cleaver because evil is being praised throughout the land. That's why you have to make up your mind who you're gonna praise because when the Lord judgment falls on our nations, judgment is falling on different nations. He says it was going to begin with his house first. Okay. Now, for example, people have tried to kill the president. People have basically no respect for the government, but it's all not the people's fault. Look at what the government has done and what they're doing. Okay. Now that I've laid the foundation, I think I've laid a pretty good foundation on obedience, disobedience, and blessings and curse, okay? Now, we, we'll see in the 21st century how we're cursing ourselves and how we're cursing others unknowingly and how others are cursing us unknowingly, okay? Now, the first thing I hear a lot of children of Yahweh say that they are not cursed. They are covered under the blood and they don't talk about Satan because they say you're giving him too much credit. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever said that? Do you say, well, I'm covered by the blood. The devil can't do nothing to me. That's true. But if you're doing something that you don't know that you're doing. See, that's the trick. That's the key right there. If you're doing something unknowingly. You're giving ground, you're opening doors, and you don't know. Okay? But scripture does not say we are not cursed if we are covered under the blood. It says that if we obey, we will not receive the curses. You understand? The, 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 the blood is the mercy, it's the grace, it's the work that Yeshua did for us on the cross. Okay? But, um... You can still walk out here and still, you know, get attacked. You know what I'm saying? You can still get attacked. You know, and you be like, why did I get attacked? You're wondering, why did you get attacked? I'm a child of the Lord. You know, what's going on? How did this happen? In one of my other uh, videos, I talked about, excuse me, how when I went to Kaiser, to the emergency room one night, now these nurses were laughing at me, you know. But before that, I had went and I had was in a lot of pain uh, uh, one other time. And, uh, you know, um, I went, I said some not nice things to the nurse. Well, the Lord allowed that to happen to me. He was, see, God tests both people. You're always under a test. He said, and then, you know what? Let me tell you something. No matter where you go, God is judging everybody on the scene. The receptionist, the doctor, the nurses, the store clerk, everybody's being judged at that because it's just like a play. We're playing all playing a part. And it depends on how we're responding to it. So, um... Anyways, though, uh, he was testing me to see, was I going to start, you know, uh, flipping off again, going off at the tongue? But I didn't because I remembered that I had to apologize for it, and I didn't like it, you know? I didn't like apologizing. You know, that's the worst thing. You, you really don't want to apologize to somebody who did you wrong. You got to go apologize because 
you allow them to cause you to sin. See, it's one thing when you sin unknowingly. But see, some people, some the devil can put you in circumstances where he will cause you to sin. He didn't make you do it, but he caused something to happen to cause you to do it. Because he knows maybe if you have an anger problem, uh, you have a lust problem, you have problems with sex, you have problems with eat, overeating, uh, you have all these different problems, okay? So he'll bring, he'll set you up. He's plotting right now, as I'm speaking, for tomorrow. Okay, and he's plotting tomorrow for the next day. So he's always on the job plotting, okay, against God's people. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave it off right here for right now, and I'm going to get back with you. And I want to let you know, in these last days, don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't, don't do it, because you know why? We have the victory. We win. And the end of the word, in the end of this beautiful, beautiful love story, the Bible, uh, some people call it the Torah, but it says we win. We have the victory. We used to sing a song in church, uh, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory, you know. And that song is still rings in my heart today, and it is still true. But we are soldiers, and we, we must war. We must war, and we must ask God to teach our hands and our fingers to fight, to get in this word and fight against the enemy. And you've got to put it in your heart and your mind and your soul, because what if you lose your Bible? What if they take it away from you one day? You don't have it. You still got to know what it says in it, because they can't take that away from you. What's ever in your heart can't be taken away. All right, I'm going to get back with you. I love you so much. You take care. And remember, everything is already okay.